Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we will look into the relationship between self-potential, free energy, and the equilibrium constant. <clears throat> we have just covered a huge unit on equilibria where we utilize the equilibrium constant extensively. We then covered thermodynamics together where we studied Gibbs free energy, enthalpy, and entropy. And now we've just learned about the cell potential. And what's really neat about all of these is that they're related to one another. Let's review over some trends we have studied together. So for a spontaneous reaction, delta G needs to be less than zero or negative for it to be spontaneous. If it is greater than zero or positive, then it's non-spontaneous. The cell potential for a spontaneous reaction needs to be greater than zero. And if it's less than zero, then we're working with a non-spontaneous reaction. And then in terms of equilibria, if K is greater than one, then we have a spontaneous reaction. It wants to go forward. If K is a lot less than one, then we have a non-spontaneous reaction. So I wanted to derive the relationship between Gibbs free energy and the cell potential. So the cell potential is defined as the potential energy difference in joules over the charge in coulombs. This potential energy difference is the maximum work. <clears throat> it represents the maximum amount of work that can be done by the system on the surroundings. So it represents the maximum amount of work that can be done by the system in this case, we're always focused on the reaction as our system on the surroundings. And work max, if we rearrange this equation, if we say this is work max, we can rearrange this equation um, to be equal to negative Q times the cell potential. <clears throat> and the charge Q, I know you're used to seeing Q as heat energy, but in this context it's charge is equal to N times Faraday constant. So N stands for the number of moles of electrons. So that's the reason why it's so important for us to balance the charge of redox reactions to see how many electrons are being lost and how many are gained. We're gonna use that information to figure out N. And then F is the Faraday's constant. So 96,485 coulombs per moles of electrons. So that's provided on your conversion factor sheet where you would find the idle gas constant. You can find Faraday's constant there. And just as a side note, um, one volt is equal to one joule per coulomb. So we may need that kind of relationship later on. And so work max is equal then to negative NFE cell potential right? And all we did here was plug in this relationship. This is what work max is defined as, is negative Q cell potential. Kind of plugging that in <clears throat> here for Q. And we also know from the thermodynamics chapter that Gibbs free energy represents the maximum work that can be done by a reaction after nature it's taken its heat tax right we went into depth about that one so gibbs free energy represents the maximum work that can be done by a reaction <clears throat> And so therefore we can plug in delta G for work max. So delta G is equal to negative NFE. This is the equation that you will use to derive, derive the relationship between cell potential and the Gibbs free energy of the reaction. 
<clears throat> no need to worry too much about this derivation here. I just wanted you to know where this equation came from and how these two are related with one another. Um, but this is the equation that you will utilize. So let's do that. Let's work a problem together to see how we can use that equation. This question is asking us to calculate the Gibbs free energy of the reaction using tabulated electrode potentials. So you'd have to look those up um, in the back of your textbook or within the chapter here. There's a table um, to figure that out. On an assessment, I'd have to provide the cell potentials to you. Okay. First things first, we want to separate out the half reactions to see what is being oxidized and what is being reduced. And so I'm just going to look at the iron species. And I see here that iron would have an oxidation state of zero, so therefore it's getting more negative. Um, if it's getting more negative, then is it undergoing oxidation or reduction? Definitely reduction. And how many electrons do I need to add? Excellent, to balance the charge. The mass is already balanced, but we need to balance the charge by adding six electrons. And this is reduction. Reduction occurs at the what? Anode or cathode? Excellent, cathode. So you would look up the electrode potentials, and the electrode potential here, I'm going to label it as cathode, is equal to negative 0 0.036 volts. <clears throat> Let's look at the other half reaction taking place. We know if the first one we looked at was reduction, then this one must be oxidation, but let's just make sure. How many electrons do I need to add into which side? Excellent. So it looks like you had to lose six electrons, that 10 had to lose six electrons, and that is oxidation. And oxidation occurs where? Excellent, in the anode. You would look up the reduction potential even though it's occurring at the anode, don't change the sign. Just write down what's in the table. And then to calculate the cell potential for this full redox reaction taking place, remember that we learned it's cathode minus anode. So that minus sign takes care of the anode. So it's negative 0 0.036 volts minus negative 0.14 volts is equal to 0 0.104 volts. <clears throat> now the moles of electrons that are being transferred in this redox reactions is what? How many electrons are being transferred? Excellent, six. Okay, so that's the reason why it's really important to break these up into half reactions. So you can see how many electrons are being transferred. And so the moles of electrons being transferred is six. We just learned the formula, the relationship between Gibbs free energy and the cell potential. So that's a negative six moles of electrons times Faraday's constant, which is 96,485 coulombs per mole of electrons. The moles of electrons cancel out times 0 0.104, and if we wanted units to cancel out, remember that one volt is equal to one joule per coulomb, and so therefore joules per coulomb is right there. So we can see that moles of electrons cancels out, coulombs cancels out, and then our answer will be in joules. So a negative 6,000, or um, we'll just say negative 6.02 times 10 to the fourth joules. And in most cases, it's written in kilojoules, so you divide by a 1,000, so 60.2 kilojoules. Is this reaction spontaneous or non-spontaneous? Excellent. With a negative delta G, we're looking at something that is spontaneous. In addition, just looking at the cell potential, it's a positive cell potential, so that also indicates it's a spontaneous reaction. So both reinforce one another. All right. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.